Want more positivity in your life? Subscribe, turn on notifications, follow us, and you know, all that techie stuff. We'd love to hear from you. Comment, share, or give us a thumbs up. We are grateful to have you hanging out with us at Matt Logan Speaks. And maybe you'll convince me, and maybe you won't, and maybe, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about one president or the other. I'm just saying that position, like, let's not hate on it. Right. I'll give you a perfect example of that. So in in Rochester right now for city council, there are a few spots that are open where people are coming in. And one of the people that, uh, I live in Ward 6 in Rochester, and one of the people that's running for that ward is a guy by the name of Craig Ugland. And Craig and I grew up together. We we grew up in Ward 6. We both came back (laughs) to Ward 6 as adults. (laughs) Yeah, literally. Um, you hated it that much. Yeah, just, just <laughs> such a rough upbringing I endured. Yeah, right. Um, but I, I will tell you, it's it's really interesting. Craig Craig is one of these people, and, and his opponent I don't know personally very well. Um, um, but I just, you know, I think when I've been watching various people comment, you know, social media can be mm. a beautiful thing, and social media can be an awful thing. So can a hammer. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and so, without diving into that whole yeah. story about Craig, Craig Craig's just a down to earth guy mm-hmm. who wants to raise his family in Rochester or in the area, and he he cares enough about our city to run for a position like that. Which, quite frankly, um, I mean, I don't know that you could they could they could have raised their salaries four hundred percent, and I still don't <laughs> think I would have wanted to do that in Rochester. Yeah. Um, it, it's just kind of a thankless job, and it takes a lot of time to do that. And um, I think it's interesting to watch where the people who know the person running um, versus those who don't, and those who don't are happy to be so critical to a, mm. to a point where they're even saying things that aren't true about a person. I just That's find that to too. be really, really hard to swallow. Yeah. Um, and he's a friend of mine, always has been. Um, he, um, Craig actually grew up with a disability, uh, always wanted to serve in the United States Army and couldn't because of that disability. Um, and he, he's not a guy who sat and sulked about that and felt, oh, pity me, poor me. He turned his skills and his passions for riding motorcycles, and now he's been the state Patriot Guard uh, president for the last four years for the state of Minnesota, and he honors those who have served by whether it's guarding their funerals or other things uh, and just you know making sure we don't forget about those people who aren't political they're just doing their job yeah. and protecting and all their of passion us and, and their yeah, yeah and their sure. freedom that they provide all of us to to sit and talk like this you know yeah. and say whatever we yeah. want um, without worrying about it and and so I, I see that even on that <clears throat> smallest scale of a city council position in Rochester and uh, not to perpetuate that, that conversation, but people just hating on, on him for no reason. And they don't even know him. They've never sat down and had a conversation like you just mentioned. Yeah. And that's it's the like point they with like, did, they, would, like, they wouldn't say those. Yeah, things. exactly. <clears throat> and that's the point kind of with everything too, is that you, you, um, you can't, I can't hate on Donald Trump. I don't know him. I can't hate on Joe Biden. I don't know him. Yeah. I can say, here's what I think of their policies. I can look at what's been accomplished. What, yeah. you know, clearly, Joe Biden has a longer record and all those things. And you look at all these different things, and then I can make a decision to vote. Yeah. But I can't say, orange man's bad, I hate him, so I'm not going to vote for him. Yeah, it, or, and I could, yeah. but that would be foolish, in it, my opinion. Yeah, you wouldn't be educating yourself no. on what maybe is more important before you cast a vote. Exactly. You know? So same thing with it's Craig. It's a really interesting thing, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I have no idea who you're talking about. I have sent, and maybe I've sent him a message and don't even realize it, but mm. I've sent messages to just tons of people. To, I, I mean, the podcast is thought and perspective. I just want people's perspectives on things. Yeah, It's very interesting to me, and I think it's so important whether... I, we're on the same political team or not. Yeah. But what's been very interesting to me is that um, the yeses that I get and the no responses that I get too mm, has been very eye-opening for me. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 impossible for it, it's it 
puts me in an impossible place to do this thing if people don't want to talk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's what that's why you can't hate on anybody. Yeah. I don't know anything about the people that haven't responded back to me because I haven't talked to them. Yeah. They're busy. Great. No problem. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Somebody else will be willing to yeah. discuss. Right. I think it's and, an, an enlightening thing because you learn so much. Oh. I'll give you an example. I, I mean, I have a, uh, I have a neighbor right across the street who actually has a sign for Craig's opponent. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked over there and talked to him. I didn't go yeah. over and cast judgment. Yeah, but I said, yeah, yeah. so I'm just curious, why why are you going to vote for this person? Sure. And he kind of had a rationale for, well, I didn't know. He's He literally just said, I didn't know either of the candidates, and I happened to talk to this person when they came to my door. So I liked what I heard, and I don't care. I'll, I'll put a sign on my lot, you know. And uh, I said, do me a favor, talk to the other candidate too. Yeah. You know, I'm biased, so I don't want to cast my biases on you. Yeah. But before you endorse someone, have have the conversation with both. And Absolutely. I, and I, I appreciate that about about a lot of people and, and it may, it certainly <laughs> happens at the lower levels more than it does at our big national <laughs> scene. Uh, I don't envision Donald Trump saying, Oh, just go talk to Joe Biden and see what he's really all about. You know, I, I you just they just are immediately you you, you need to support me you know? yeah and there's yeah. not that there's not that conversation right, right whereas there really probably should be right yeah um you and i could then ha- have a really formulated opinion if you Absolutely. got to sit down with both of them for sure um yeah it's really interesting and so my neighbor and i had a great conversation about it and i encouraged him to go to both websites and and talk to both people and he did that and um um i didn't ch- it wasn't for me to try to change his vote. But I said, you know, you do, you're right. You don't know either of these people, but do me the honor. This guy is a good friend of mine. And um, talk to him, you know, figure that out. And he did, and he had a great conversation. Um, it was kind of interesting. He said, I did actually get a call back from him. And uh, I said, well, how'd that go? Well, it went pretty good. I'm not going to take the sign out of my yard, but, but I might have – changed my vote actually sure and i thought well I, that wasn't my take you know yeah yeah you know, my neighbor's such a great great guy and i said that wasn't my point i said uh, but you were able to find out for yourself what what you wanted and he's more educated on his vote now yeah that's good that's a good thing we need to be more educated all, yeah, when, when these important things happen we can't there's bad Democrats, there's bad Republicans, there's all those agree. things. So dig into that and find out. Don't just say, I was raised as a Democrat, so I'm going to vote Democrat. I was raised as a Republican, I'm going to yeah. vote. You know, and in fact, I do some uh, some speaking on things, and I actually bring it up like, hey, when we realize that we're not Democrats and we're not Republicans, we're human beings, I mean, it changes everything. You know, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm yeah. not a Libertarian. I'm not a yeah. Independent. I'm not. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, exactly. And and that's what it's about. Labels labels are oftentimes uh, easy ways for people to judge others, in my opinion. You know, and and I fall in that sa- that kind of yeah. same group. I, I that resonates a lot with me because. Uh, I've I have voted on both sides of I have two aisles for various positions and various things over the course of the year, and just because I'm a teacher, that doesn't mean I'm I don't care anything about what anyone else on the other side of the aisle would talk about. I'm just going to vote here, and then on the flip side, I'm, I'm because I'm a realtor and I live in a world as a as a licensed realtor is probably one of the most capitalistic styles of <laughs> yeah. income and growth and business you can be in. I mean, you, you either make what you do for yourself in your own business, you're your own independent contractor. I mean, I don't have a union backing me as a, you know, I don't have all those other things that the teaching world does. So, um, yeah, at the core of it for me, and, and it's about being a human being. Yeah. And, 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 and I make my own judgments. And you can go down the, 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 path saying okay the capitalist is evil or you can say that it's not or whatever but here's the reality that we've seen in recorded history Mm -hmm. there's been no other system that has freed more people 
There's been no other system that ha of, mm -hmm. of government that has fed more people. Yep. There has been no other system of government that has allowed people to worship the God of their choice so freely. Mm -hmm. There has never been any kind of other system that has allowed anybody to have individual success yeah. in history. Yeah. That is real. That is real. And love it or hate it, it's not perfect. But it has done a lot of good in the world, oh, in man. the entire world. Yeah. I, I'll share this with you. I mean, so I, I haven't expound on my family or anything, but I have a father who was a Vietnam veteran yeah. and, um, and was drafted for Vietnam, not wow. by choice. Right. And, um, and served. And, um, you know, bears a lot of crosses that didn't, you know, it's just not a fun topic no. for him as a 19 year old, you know, yeah. to be in Vietnam trying to just survive right. and then come home from that and basically be told, don't talk about it. Yeah. And hate it and be spit on yeah. when he showed up in, in, you know, on the West coast coming back into the States and then not even understanding why that's happening, you know? Um, and he spent a lot of time in the military. He was 33 and a half year, you know, uh, mm. army veteran and, and whatnot, but that's in this conversation kind of beside the point. But what, what's interesting recently is he's seventy five years old now, and he's never seen something like COVID and this what he refers to as a political mess. Uh, it's just it's really disheartening to a person like him who has served and served and served to make sure everybody's freedoms are equally respected. Yeah, and. You know, and then to see just such hatred, it's just, it's, it's, it almost tugs at my heartstrings listening to him talk about yeah. it because you're just like, all the guy really wants is everybody to just be real with each other. Just yeah. be human. Give a damn about your, your neighbor. Even if they don't agree with you about a policy, right. for God's sakes, they're your neighbor. You know Exactly. So that's, that's really powerful. a powerful thing. It really is. Um, it's interesting, and he's not alone. There's many people like that. Um, I think, unfortunately, you know, if I had to blame someone for it, it, it wouldn't be a person. It would be the fast ability for, and I'm not going to go into news or what's, what's real and what's <laughs> fake. I mean, because that's... That's political too, but but the ability for a, something like a false narrative for something to come out, even like my friend Craig, there's just, people are just bad mouthing this guy mm. for no reason. They have no idea, and what they're saying I know is not accurate or true, but people believe it because it can be thrown out there and up on my phone. Oh, that must be true then, and years later they find out it's not. You know, to me, I blame that. Yeah. I really do, and. Uh, we have to be so cautious what we believe these days. You, you, you do, but it also comes down to we've been, um, I feel like we've been manipulated into not thinking mm -hmm. and just, oh, wow, it was said, so it must be true. I mean, I've had, unfortunately, that experience, and I'm, you know, I wasn't even in the same state. <laughs> you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't here. So it couldn't, couldn't have happened that way. Right. And uh, I've witnessed other things that I've been in a situation where people would say, uh, uh, you know, so-and-so about this person or did say, and I'm like, um, I was there. That's not what happened. Mm -hmm. That's not even close. Yeah. You know, that's not that crazy. So then we, what we have to, what we're, our, what is our responsibility as an individual is we have to go and check it out. You know, yep. we have to go and think about it, look about, okay, I, I know Dave, does that make sense? Let me call Dave. Right. You know, I'm going to find out, uh, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And yeah. nobody does that anymore. No, no, it's, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. It's and amazing. <laughs> I get, I'm going to say this right out publicly and, and you didn't ask me this, but a lot of guests ask me this. It's like, is this going to be edited? <laughs> This is a podcast, dude. Like, this is not edited, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is not like we're not going to yeah. make something sound like it isn't or whatever. It's an open conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, now. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that's and that's good. Nobody does that anymore, though, right? It's it's catastrophizing everything. And um, Denzel Washington was very outspoken about this topic at one point. Uh, it's been a year or two before, but he was 
really criticizing media mm -hmm. in general and not any one particular media, but just media in general. Yeah, I can rem remember that. I remember him, lis I listened to him and thought, gosh, he is so articulate and so smart about this. But his message that he was trying to get across, and he was being interviewed sure. at the time, um, and he just flat out came out and said, you guys will take any story as long as you're the first one to the table with it. Even if it's completely wrong, mm -hmm. you'll run with it. And I thought to myself, wow, that is really eye-opening. Like, he's so right. Whoever can, I mean, that's what sells stories. That's mm -hmm. what sells newspapers and media. Even if it's completely wrong, they, they're doing that. And I just can't. I, I just don't have any time for that. Someone told me about, um, and I haven't looked at this personally, but it makes sense because I've heard, I, I'm from somewhat familiar with what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah. But they said, there was a story that came out, and I think, I'm not going to say who it was, but it's because I'm, I'm not sure if I'll get it right. But anyway, a massive media outlet mm -hmm. runs this story, and it's 90% not right, correct. Mm -hmm. no. And then to fix it, quote unquote, they run a uh, retraction, mm -hmm. like at one in the morning, mm -hmm. and it was like three seconds long. What damage is done, and they don't even try to repair it. No. Um, so why? Yeah. Anyway, I, yeah, right. We could, Isn't uh, it crazy though? Because uh, because there are people, um, you know, uh, in society, there are people who just will take that as the gospel and run with it. Then and and then they're telling everybody that as if it's fact, you know. And and so sometimes that to me is just. Um, I just watched the, you know, if you have to forgive me, I can't remember the, the Netflix series about social media that just yeah, censored the social, or the social, social dilemma, social dilemma. Yeah. Just watch that. Did a whole and podcast on it. Holy moly. <laughs> I mean, it, it speaks to that topic. Uh, totally. There, but it's like people, you gotta, you gotta really dig deep to understand that. And some of our older generations, that's like just, you know, shoo, shoo, shoo. And yeah. They don't even realize it's happening. Yeah, the dopamine hit that you get too that they talked about was like, whoa! Simon, like, there's science behind that. There is science behind it, big time. Uh, Simon Sinek is a really interesting mm. person to listen to on YouTube. Uh, Simon Sinek, he talks about that very topic. Okay, with regards to millennials, he has a whole millennial piece uh, that he's done TED talks on and other things. But Simon Sinek is an incredible, knowledgeable guy. Yeah, I heard he's quite the researcher. He's really like he, smart. Yeah, and he he gets the human element of that. But his big break was in the military. He, yeah. he got some not in he wasn't yeah. in i shouldn't say it like that but mm -hmm. his big break was um being involved with the military mm -hmm. and stuff like that yes so that's really cool i mean his heart was there his passion was yeah. like helping them right and yep he, yeah he brought a system to them essentially and, and he's that's, a, that's he's really a cool. very cool intellect and um and he talks about that in great detail about millennials about how that yeah the dopamine hit and how it's very you know when you've i mean i've i've felt my phone buzz four times here now since we've been sitting here sure. so i know there's messages here and <laughs> subliminally i'm thinking yeah, yeah. you know but I'm yeah obviously in the middle of a podcast and i can just check my, <laughs> right. my, my you know, sorry man just give me a minute yeah, here uh, um but edit but, <laughs> yeah the edit would come in but it is one of those things where um he talks about our younger generations and his concern for them being able to develop meaningful relationships with people mm. um he dives into that topic and it's really interesting to listen i'll have to, to watch that I simon sinek that. just yeah. uh yeah if you google or youtube uh, simon sinek s-i-n-e-k okay yeah millennials and listen to it it's only about 15 20 minutes but fascinating information huh yeah, yeah. and it's the social dilemma it, on that are right here yeah and you kind of wrap that back up into having students out of school right now you're plugging them into a screen all the time. The kind of, um, we're on a path that, you, that literally the social dilemma talks about it uh, in, in pretty good detail, but I've also read some books on it. Mm -hmm. They can track uh, suicide in youth directly to social media that they can't tie it to social media. They can tie it to the timeline of social media, right? Like yeah. it increased hand in hand with social media when it came out and when it ramped up not shocked by that fact yeah as a, as a former so now we're in the middle of this crazy. yeah 
we we better do something well i can tell you my my as, uh, aspects of that of concern are high really high in fact we're i think a lot of educators are watching for warning signs like crazy but um we you know i teach i've i've been a physical education teacher <laughs> And now you want me to teach virtually, you know, and uh, um, that's fine. I can make that happen. But we also have situations, I'll give you just one example, where, um, you know, we have some students who are, are not comfortable with having a device turned on in their home, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that that would cause enormous stress for somebody. They maybe don't want their peers to see their home. They don't want to see what goes on in their home. They don't want um, anybody to have to watch them exercise yeah at home in front of a camera I, like i get it yeah i get it i, I can think back <clears throat> to middle school and think, oh my god if i had to do this this would be crazy yeah i know I, they're an adult now stressful. but a, a kid that was extremely athletic mm. extremely athletic could have done any sport and spent very successful yep. but couldn't do it in front of anybody yep. that was just something they wouldn't yeah. do anxiety and that's okay yeah and so i understand that completely <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, how do we reach to those kids? Yeah. You know, how do we get to those kids in a time where my job is to get them actually off of screens? Yeah. But I'm forced to work with screens, and we, we, don't, want, we don't want them on. So we do unique things throughout our 85-minute block where, where we intentionally tell them, shut it off and go, go get fresh air, go for a walk, go do this, and then come back for our workout. We'll do that, and we're going to get you off of this thing because we know all of our other classroom teachers are consuming that with screen time, and uh, it's really concerning. It really is. Let's wrap up. We've been chatting a while. Yeah, Sorry, absolutely. it's great. Yeah, I love it's it. good. <laughs> I, I, I'm a good talker, but yeah, um, I enjoy it. It's a great conversation. What I want to say, and, and then you weigh in on that, and, and then we'll wrap up, is sure. – is, um, we need to, we as people who stop and think about things is what I'm saying, we need to s- stop looking at, let me say, the sleight of hand, and COVID is the sleight of hand. Mm. It's a good magis- magician does what? They are doing something with their right hand so that their left hand can do the magic, right? Mm-hmm. And our, the focus is so focused in on the COVID and the political side of things that we're, we're that's the sleight of hand. We're losing sight of the whole picture, the big picture you talked about earlier. Yeah. What can we do, in your opinion, to like, wait a minute, take a step back, look at that whole picture and say, COVID exists. Uh, we need to work with it and deal with it. But wait a minute, the weight of all these other things over here. Mm. Yeah, boy, it's a big question. Um. I can think of lots of things that I think uh, if I could wave my magic wand would just <laughs> automatically happen. Uh, we've talked about things like, you know, just being good to people around you. Mm-hmm. It's such a small, genuine thing, regardless of your differences. Like, um, I, I still kind of get back to, you know, um, there are there are leaders in every little community, whether it's your cul-de-sac or if it's your city, your town, or your country, um, and I think that we we need to get back to that. I, I think that's the whole notion of nine twelve mm-hmm. one is that we we nothing else really mattered. We we were we're all in this together. That hasn't changed, you know. Our country hasn't changed in that perspective. Our towns, our communities haven't changed. Um, and I think I, I I would get back to what you can control because we can only control our own actions Mm -hmm, right i can't control mm -hmm. what our politicians are going to do or say or whatever that's way out of one person's control but i can control what i'm doing so when i look back to our initial time together at john marshall high school right i I was i was in control of an audience there that could benefit from you coming in and speaking about your own personal experience and that very positively influenced a lot of people by just making that one decision, right? And bringing you in to talk about your your experience with Deej and and what had happened uh, resonated with hundreds and hundreds of people that day. And that was just one time, you you know, you spoke and uh, so powerful. Um, That's a great example 
of what leaders and and I don't care. A leader can be a teacher in a classroom mm -hmm. of 30 kids. A leader can be a mayor of a town. A leader can be a mentor for uh, Boulder Options, mentoring with teens. Um, good friend of mine, Daryl Thompson's nonprofit. Um, a, a leader can be a, a church group, um, you know, youth pastor. Uh, I watched my son do fought and fought and fought to have to go to seventh grade confirmation for the first year. Why, <laughs> why do I need to do this? I'm, you know, I forced him to, you know, you're going to take your lawn chair and your Bible. We're going to you head over to church and you're going to yeah. sit in the parking lot with all these people. And he loved it. Yeah. He loved it afterwards. He, you know, yeah, it was kind of fun, dad. You know, I enjoyed that. You know, we need to shift the focus back onto those types of things that keep us human and keep us together and, um, remember what's really most important in life, you know, because five, ten years from now, are we really going to care that much about, you know, there will probably be a new president at that time. Who knows, right? And is that really going to be that important or is it going to be that, you know, I took care of these people across the cul-de-sac from me? To me, that, we just, we got to get back to the that in life yeah it would it would be way more powerful than all this bs that's going on <laughs> for sure for sure well said yeah, man yeah, well said yeah. thanks for being here uh, you, it, you it, come thank back you. again sometime I'd, I'd be honored to come back yeah, anytime let's do it uh, anytime i think we could talk about about it. any topic nah, I, I, for a I can long tackle time. tackle a few but I, yeah. I i'm not i'm no expert i just I, I i think it's valid especially on a podcast like this and thank you for having me but i think it's just valid to just be real about things and not sugarcoat things and, you know, um, talk about things, uh, in a, in a sense that take you out of that realm of just being a good, good person to other yeah, people. Yeah. You know, I agree. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day that like, you've said it twice and I know you have real world experience with your, your lovely daughter that life is really precious and it's really short. It's really short. So you whether gotta, you're 94 or 17, <laughs> it's really short. You got a, you got a, you know, a certain amount of time on this, this earth with everybody else. And, um, why not make it a positive one yeah. instead? So yeah, it's cool that's, stuff, man. It's a good place to end. Yeah. See you next time. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. You got it. All right.